Welcome back to Banner Saga 2, where we check out this new Godstone-esque thing. Placed upside down in the ground, the petrified roots of a giant tree reach toward the sky. All the Varl, including Ivor and Hawken, have separated from the caravan temporarily, giving Baldringer's Godstone a wide breath. Baldringer. The giant's presence is missed as you continue to feel watch. Elio, what do you know about Baldring? I can search it for items. I want to know what he knows. Not much, but enough, the scald says. These flames symbolize Baldringer's love of fire and war, the first being a means to the second. When the Varl were dominating humans in the first great conflict, it was Baldringer who gave the losing side fire to combat the giants. You will hold up your hand to halt the storyteller, listening through the rain for anything that might be following you. Hearing nothing, Aleo resumes holding the gaze of his audience. Humans praise Baldringer for the gift of fire. But the god only desired more war, he points toward the distant shapes of the Varl. When the giants and humans found peace, the godstone fell from grace. It looks to continue keeping the land scorched. Perhaps its shadow can still kill. Grab some fighters to patrol the area. Step into the shadow. Against Elio's wishes, you walk directly into the shadow of the godstone's gnarled roots. Many clansmen gasp, not caring for your disregard. The gods are dead, you remind them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moral decline. An arrow suddenly sinks into the ground near you. We're under attack, shouts Elio. Shields come up, and fighters join you as you charge the enemy cloaked in the storm. We have injuries and no varl. That's okay, because she should stay in the back. And this gives us a chance with some of our humies. She's got slag and burn. But she needs her upgrades. She technically has better stats than her. <laughs> mm, we need... We need you. Egil. Egil, you're needed. Uh, this is probably the loadout I want. He could maybe exchange for a second Spearman. That's about the only potential difference oh wow we've got a ton of stuff ton of stuff prove his ability yeah rook being baller works for me so now he's got mark level three call to arms which seven enemies remaining i guess if we have more yeah if you outnumber them technically it gives you the advantage because it goes to loot mode or whatever so he's gonna have two points available maybe I just just max that just so it's not an issue and then regen armor 20% resistance 20% regen Hmm. So you could get attacked multiple times in a round. But if everybody's regening... Hmm. Because that can do extra. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So we'll confirm. And Rook is doing great. You need as much stats as I can give you. I'd love to give him a break, but that's where his strength lies. But let's make him useful. And maybe 13. Do I want to worry about my second string at all? I mean, they'll upgrade quick if I need to. Oh, he has no item. Knockback on strength greater than three. Two will, just general extra strength. Two armor on rest. He's very likely to rest. Crit chance. Eh, that was kind of meh. 
Let's see if it's going to let me do any placement this time. Because the placement, the menu is there as if I could. Injury. I wonder if it has something to do with the swamp. I mean, it's not the worst placement, but... There, he said something and I couldn't read it. Let's see. Yeah, they don't they they have no real spirit to use. So we can kind of avoid them a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I can two shot him. Potentially. He just has his stone wall. I think that's his play. And level one stone wall. You do have a brilliant plan, right? Someone? Anyone? Alright, if they can get bunched up on one another, that would be the best situation. So I'll probably put those two together. He'll sneak around their diagonal, which is great. He'll solo. Yeah, that's my plan. Interesting. Spear v. Spear. Oh, that didn't work. All right. Yeah, so you stay in the protective range. That doesn't work, but this does. Nasty. Who's next? Lower bear, then the upper bear. Slag and burn. Hmm. Perfect. Or if I could do... Yeah, I like it. That's beautiful. And how far is your range on that arc lightning? He is going to have to risk a little bit here. Make sure that his arc lighting hits everyone. Ah! I don't understand how that mechanic works. There you go. One less. So they have one, two, three. Oh, we lost one. One, two, three, four, five. We one, two, three. We're even, so there's no point at the moment. Okay, breaking ranks. Finish him. It's not too bad. That'll help us. That won't help us. That's bad. Hmm. This is a perfect time to use the impale attack. Alright, here... Uh, I'm thinking Bear's dummy They'll go straight at us Beautiful Wow Critted or something Alright you'll go here 
Mark Prey, high level. Lucky shot. Uh, she's in bad shape. Just have to do my best. Oh, that'll use up all of his stuff. What I could do, move to here. Oh, wait, he has tail worth telling. Ah, shit. That was a fuck up. Who's next? Give Luden the tale worth telling. Oh, she survived. So Luden has a little bonus. Oh, really? That's annoying. promotion so one of your wounds affect how many clansmen get lost nothing Pull one more upgrade. Having killed or run off the Cragsman, you return to the remaining clansmen at the Godstone. Grabbing your belongings, you your foot hits something in the mud. You reach down and find a small skull with a yellow ribbon through the eyes. You toss it in the bag without another thought. Fallow's rebirth. Well, let's, oh, the rain finally ceases, but the wind picks up. You squint into the gusts and have a clear view of the vast plains ahead. There doesn't seem to be much... Oh, there doesn't seem to be much out there, Ivor says. His tone conveys wonder and concern in equal measure. Now, we can upgrade if we run to battle. We have Grundar. Probably another thing before we get there. The ground shakes again, enough to cause the yaks to strain at their leads in panic. Out here in the plains, with nothing but open sky above, you feel remarkably vulnerable. Only a few trees around and no mountains, Hawkins says in a wry tone. Looks like we only have to worry about the ground opening up beneath us. He shrugs at the look that you give him. And then... almost looks forgotten by the rest of the world. Maybe those who live here have forgotten the rest of us, too. In a field just outside Grundar, the caravan spots several creatures you assumed were myth. I don't believe it. Are those... Two horseborn hold simple bronze weapons and stand guard over a few others who look wounded, unable to rise. The size of the caravan makes them nervous. I have to get a closer look. Me too. The two of you advance a hundred yards, showing every sign of respect and peace. A number of clansmen push closer too. The male horseborn stomps a hoof repeatedly. The female, tail whipping, brandishes a javelin. Damn, the caravan is scaring them. Everyone? Go tell the archers. Everyone, move back! How about your sudden shout spooks the female horseborn. She throws a javelin, which pins the ground near your feet. Several archers fire, but their shots are wide. 
Hold! No more arrows! The male says something which sounds like a, a long stream of consonants. The female lowers her second javelin. We just want to help. The male's tail swishes. You help? His voice sounds strained, and his mouth moves uncomfortably around the foreign words. Yes, help. Oddleaf steps aside as you wave to Ivan for help. The female looks agitated. She speaks in their, their strange way. The male responds to her, then turns to you. Help, Roek, and others. I'll try. This is certainly a first. The standing horseborn step aside, allowing Ivan to approach the wounded fighters. Okay, that kind of worked out. With Ivan and Juno tending to the wounded, Roek and the other horseborn, the caravan settles down outside the scant town of Grundar. It appears the town is enjoying a small festival. Quite a few clansmen go over the hill to enjoy the sights and sounds, but soon return looking disappointed. They called us outsiders, a woman says. They don't want us interrupting what their, harvest, their wheat harvesting festival, but the merchants don't seem to mind trading. The clansmen soon shrug it off and take renewed interest in the horseborn, some in awe, others in disgust. They're disgusting horses. They are to be ridden like beasts, the beasts of burden they are. Now, um, let's have a chat with our different people. Let's start with old Luden. The prince is acting even more standoffish than usual. You and Ivor have caught him staring ahead and twisting the ring on his finger over and over. Irsa quietly stands nearby. Glad to be heading home? Luden turns to the two of you and offers a polite smile. Even after that chasm, would it surprise you if I said no? I thought you hated being so far from Aberang. Life on the trail hasn't won me over, but it's not all bad. It's even possible I've learned a few things about leading people while out here. You, Ivor, Ursa, are stunned to hear the prince talk this way. I've grown up in comfort and trained with scholars and fighters. I've never known anything else. Saying stuff like that won't make you any friends in this caravan. But that's just it. Among these clansmen, I've seen the differences. I think I understand them a bit more. Mm. Well, that's great, Prince Luden. I'm glad you think so, but I doubt my father will. Ursa will agree. My father's not what you call open-minded the king's a hard oh wait the king's a hard man has to be but his son is his weakness Luden gla glares at her but the archer only smirks prince is the king's weakness I'll make my own opinions of the king can you tell me about King Minoth I suppose but there's not much to him he's king he draws a hard line on nearly every topic talking to him is much like being told what to do. In fact, it's exactly that. Alette says, said that about me at times. This isn't about being his son. You'll see. Kings usually have to make tough decisions and stick with them. Maybe someday you'll see why. I know. I just don't think he'll care for my ideas on treating with peasant commoners. What would you like to be called? We're all people, Prince. Even you. Perhaps you're right. Just keep an open mind about your father. Wait, just keep an open mind about your father the way you'd like him to have toward your ideas. That's something I've never considered before. I'll think on it. As Prince Luden and Yersa walk away, you feel Ivor watching you. What? Do you believe half the nonsense you say? I think I sounded really wise just then. It sounded like you've been practicing it for a while. That's fair. I'll work on it. The two of you share a smile before moving on. So maybe the prince will be a good guy after all. Scat, Scat Hatch. So he's a shit, shit eater, I guess. Thanks. <laughs> you, you glance at Ubin, who... Who starts and smiles. We haven't seen Ubin for a bit. Scathatch is thank thanking you for helping his friend, Roect. Deryu is the other one. But she's not in talking with Varl in human's mood. You're welcome. I'd like to see 
I'd like you to meet Hakon. Scat ha hatches tail, swats his flanks, and he bows his head towards Hakon. Varl's man's same herd. No, we're no longer enemies. No, but we're no longer enemies. I haven't seen Horseborn in centuries. Last they knew, humans and Varl were at each other's throats. Um, what brings you so far north? Yeah, looks confused, but Ubin shows him the map pointing to Dalaland and Grundar. Food, our planes break. Hakon snorts. Might be justice. Didn't they kill all the horses, Scrivener? His ancestors did, yes, but blaming folks for things that happened hundreds of years before they were alive? You may as well accuse these humans around of starting the Great Wars. How do you know our language? He just stares. You talk like us. Where did you learn? Heard little trade with mans in mud. I think he means our bog friends, the Cragsmen. And what happened to Roek? Roek, brave fighter. Protect food. Hit many times. Hit? Who was attacking? Says many things in other language. Trith Kamathai. His eyes go wide, and he stomps the ground before pointing west. You look at Ubin. I don't have a clue, but clearly not a friend. Was it the people here, here in Grundar? Scathatch looks where Hakon is pointing. He shakes his head and points west again. The Varl King eyes Scathatch suspiciously. Have you found the food you were seeking? Does this mean all our spawn have come north? Have you found the food? Enough for time, my guess. Two others take to herd to in south. His hooves scuff the ground during certain words. Just those two. What about you and the couple? Scathatch, Roek, Deridu, stay. This herd help. We help this herd. That might not be wise. Scathatch speaks quickly in his foreign language and kicks his back leg out once. Not that I'm a translator, but I'm guessing they're honor-bound to return the favor. I think you're stuck with them. Hakon looks at you and shrugs. No getting around demands of honor. Yeah, but they're gone. First chance we get. And he moved his tent. The blonde axeman, one of two twins from the small village near Skoger, is chopping in to a fallen tree for no apparent reason. He swings, his swings look dangerous. Hogan, everything okay? He glares at you. Where's your brother, Mogan? He left with the ravens, wondering if I should have done the same. Why is that? I've been following your lead for a long time now. And for what? My brother's gone. My wife and children are frightened of everything around them, including me. I tell them this constant fighting is only for a time, but it's changing me. I see it in their eyes, in my own reflection. I thought I was doing it to protect them, but if they think I'm a monster, what's the point? Uh, maybe it's about time? Well, he's a good fighter. So they'll appreciate it someday. I don't know. My wife said she needs a man who will hold her more than his axe. I think she might leave me. I'm not really sure where she'd go, but that's none of my business. Just tell this caravan just tell me this caravan would fall apart without me fighting in the shield wall, and I'll stay armed. Keep chopping the log, the answer will come to you. Be with your family. Hogan sighs with relief and nods. I'll still be around, but I'll be busy playing with my kids. You're a good man, Rook. He'll he'll do the He'll he'll come about when the time is right if he's needed. We have no food to rest, so that's not happening. There's a market. We do have renown to spend. Oh, what does this do? Two on talents. On armor talents. And three armor. That's pretty good. The three armor is pretty good. Two X talents, one range distance. Strength, crit chance. Strength talents, strength, knockback on strength. Just will. Plus two strength. Plus three armor. 
this one is like pretty good. Expensive, but all right. So we have one day worth of supplies. I don't think we can really rest or afford to rest. Ah, uh, he just needs to go into retirement. Uh, who can replace him? Maybe him. Oh, they're pretty tough. But I don't trust them. Oh, Ivor. Why isn't Ivor in the loadout? Uh, you're not necessarily needed if we have who we need. Mm. We really need a, a tank. Seventeen twelve with three break. Like other than maneuverability he seems better in most ways turn the favor hmm that shall be seen Mm. Let's do that. How much does this cost? Is it I mean 19? I'm okay with that. Let's see if we have a new training session. You can handle yourself, but what about you other fighters? Ever use a varl and an archer to trap somebody? You think about what he's saying. Well, let's go. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, I still can't move anyone around, which I feel like I'm supposed to be able to do that. So we'll start this little battle in the next episode. So catch y'all then.